channel. It's definitely been a while. Um, long story short, while I was in Ukraine, I just struggled a lot with my mental health, and so every single time I did try to make a video, basically it, I just got a lot of footage on camera of me crying hysterically in front of the camera. So I kind of stopped doing videos back then. And then when I moved back to America, I was going to school full time. I was working like 30 hours a week at Olive Garden. And then I also had two internships. So I was super packed, super, super packed this last semester. So I didn't really have time. Um, as you know, the world kind of slowed down dramatically. So all my classes moved to online. My hours got cut short from Olive Garden. Um, my internships went to like five hours a week. It was all online. So I had a lot more time to do things that I enjoyed and didn't get to do the whole time that I was busy with school and work and everything. And so I decided to get back one into room decorating and then of course making videos. Um, I'm not trying to become the next YouTube influencer. Basically I only make videos because I am a digital marketing student so I need to practice my video editing skills. So that is what we're here for. Um, this week's video is just a little home renovation for my parents guest bathroom. Um, this video is going to be, sorry, not this video, this whole room transformation is going to be under $200. I'm going to break everything that I did down by cost. That way, if you are redoing your own place, you can kind of implement things that you like from mine based on your budget, your style, everything like that. Additionally, everything that I purchased will be in the comments below for things that I can find. If not, I will post similar things. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. So to start off with this bathroom, I'll insert some before videos, but basically this bathroom, it had all lilac walls, minus two of them were beige. Um, we had one shelf up with this huge fake flower vase. Um, I just didn't, it looked really fake, like it looked extremely fake. And then I don't actually have a video of it, but there used to be this huge picture up here. It was an eye of an iris. I will attach a picture of it. It's like an abstract art. So it always just looked like a big shadow man to me as a kid. Anyway, that was in here. And then also we had the brush nickel in here for the towel rods, the sink, and like the shower doors. But then there's black fixtures on the knobs. So I guess the criteria that my parents set forth for me when I started this bathroom was that I couldn't do anything too, too extreme. So I couldn't paint like I couldn't spray paint any light fixtures, any um, of the towel racks, any of the sink faucets, anything like that. I also couldn't paint the cabinets just because all of the cabinets in this house, all the bathrooms and all the kitchens are the same cabinetry. So when they, if they sell the house in the future, when they sell the house, they all match. So that was kind of, their criteria. So then my biggest challenge was I had to find out a way that I could incorporate brown from the cabinets and the shower tile with silver from the light fixtures and the towel rods. And I was so lost. I was like, how am I supposed to make brown and silver go together? Because that's just kind of a known thing that they just don't really go together. At least in my opinion, they don't really go together. So I went on Instagram and I asked all of you in an Instagram story um, what you guys thought I should do as far as colors and I looked on Pinterest, just trying to see what color I should do. So I actually decided on this teal color that you can kinda, kinda, kinda see from this um, shot frame. 
Anyway, um, I'll insert some inspo pictures I had as well as my mood board. My mood board did kind of change as we went about it. Originally, I was going for more of a dark, moody feeling. We were gonna keep the gray towels my parents already had, keep the gray floor mats that were in here. We were gonna do a black and white gallery wall on this wall behind me. We were gonna do peel and stick tile here and then just kind of accent it out with other black and white accessories, just to kind of keep it a little more moody. And I will explain kind of how that changed throughout. Getting into the process of how I did everything, the first thing I did obviously was take off all the light fixtures and just prep, prep for painting. So I taped everything, took off all the light fixtures, we took off the towel rod um, and the old shelf. And then we went in with this paint. I don't remember the paint name. I will put it in the comments below, but I don't remember what it was. It's like deep ocean blue, something like that. Anyway, so we went ahead and we painted these two walls, the one that's behind me right now and the one above the shower. We did only paint them about three fourths of the way down just because we were planning on putting that peel and stick tile right here. So there was just no point in painting the wall all the way down to the bottom if we weren't gonna use the entire wall. It's just waste of paint. Which made it nice because then we were able to buy just a quart of this blue paint and a quart of the white paint. We touched up the cream walls with white. Just give it, make it a little brighter in here. And so that paint cost us $28 for both of the quarts. Um, I didn't account that we did actually buy um, two samples, one of this blue, one of a darker blue. Those were $2 each. It's like a cup of paint that you can get. You can get them at Lowe's, you can get them at Home Depot or wherever you're shopping. So we did get those as well, but I didn't put that in the final budget account. So yeah, we went ahead and did that. And then once we peeled all the tape off, we realized that our Tic Tac tiles that we originally purchased um, for those of you who don't know, Tic Tac tiles are peel and stick tiles. You can use them for backsplashes in the kitchen, which is what we're actually going to use them for now. Or you could use them for like accent walls in a bathroom. So what we originally bought a pack of 10 and I thought, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought 10 packets was going to cover this whole wall. I don't know if I was thinking I was buying 20 or if they were a lot bigger. Anyway, so I originally purchased those. It took like three weeks to ship out just because shipping is delayed from everything. And the pack of 10 costs $40. Um, so basically to finish this wall, we would have had to buy $100 to $150 more of those tiles. And it was gonna take an additional three weeks. But we had already made this wall blue to like right about here and then it's purple from here down. And so we're like, okay, we need to finish this now. We need to find a more cost efficient way. So my dad actually su um, suggested this wainscot boarding that's behind me. We got this from Home Depot. This whole board, it was a four by eight feet board and it was $19 for the entire board. So way more cost efficient than the Tic Tac tiles to begin with. And then we just cut it down to size um, we nailed it in with a nail gun. I don't actually have footage of that. There just wasn't room for me to fit in here with my phone. Yes, I apologize. All my B-roll clips are with my phone. I couldn't find my camera. So all my B-roll clips are with my phone. Anyway, so we nailed it in and then we just called the boards. I mean, you can't really tell, but like right here, it's actually two different boards. You really, really honestly can't tell because we called it, we filled in the nail holes with wood putty and then we just painted everything white. And then this trim was an additional $7. It's like three inches thick. We got seven foot long piece. And so then we also just nailed that on top and also painted that the same white as the walls and as this beadboard. And I actually, like this a lot better. I think it looks a lot cleaner. And yeah, it was this whole thing for the trim and this board was like $26 rather than 
the $150 film stick tie would have been. I will say um, this method of the wainscot boarding while super cheap is not renter friendly. So if you are renting, that is something to keep in mind. I technically, we did only nail it in a few spots. So I guess technically, if you know how to pry this off, you could fill it in with wood putty and then repaint everything. But as far as the peel and stick tiles go, even though they are more expensive, they are definitely rental renter friendly. Um, you can look it up. Lots of YouTubers have been using them lately, but they basically, they peel right off. They don't leave a residue. They don't um, tear up any paint on the wall. So if you are in a rental, I guess, if you have the money to use the peel and stick tile, go for it. I really need water. <coughs> I'm not sick. Okay. Hopefully I should be better. Okay. So then the next thing that we did was make this new shelf that's on the wall. For that, we bought a $7 plank of wood from Home Depot. Lies. The plank of wood was from Lowe's. The brackets are from Home Depot. Um, just bought these $2 brackets from Home Depot. We did use drywall anchors that we bought from Walmart um, just so we could pick where in the wall I wanted to be because I wanted it to be center. I wanted the brackets to be 16 inches apart. I know that's random, but I wanted them to be 16 inches apart. And so I didn't want to have to rely on where studs was because the stud was actually in the middle of the wall. Anyway, and then we did go ahead and just put some finishing touches on that. And then our next big project was actually these mirrors. Um, these mirrors were super, super, super affordable. They're a DIY mirror. I'm not gonna lie, they took quite a, it took us a few days just to make these mirrors. Mainly we just, we got sick of making them. Uh, we got the actual mirrors from Michaels. They were like three or four dollars. We got three different sizes and shapes. Just kind of mix things up. Then we got the bamboo vase filler from the floral section. That was like twenty dollars. And then we got this raffia. I don't know why I'm pointing up. You can't even see those. Um, we got that from Amazon. I I think it was like seven dollars. Daniel bought it. I'm not actually sure how much it was. I'll link it. But yeah, so it ended up being like twelve dollars per mirror. So super, super affordable. Especially if you've ever bought mirrors, you know how expensive mirrors can be. Like they are not cheap. I don't know why, but they are not cheap. Anyway, if you want to know how to make these mirrors, I will link the tutorial I follow down below. It's from Lone Fox Homes. Holmes channel. Um, he's amazing. I love all his DIYs. But yeah, so I will link this exact tutorial below so you can follow it as well. The only thing we did differently is instead of using his quick hold adhesive or whatever he used, we used Gorilla Glue hot glue. And you guys, this stuff is so strong. It does dry quick, so you gotta work quickly. Don't try to glue too much at a time because it does dry fast, but it dries so strong. Um, this top, my right, your left mirror, actually, so we originally tried to hang these up with command hooks because we wanted to be able to place them anywhere on the wall so the studs didn't match up. So we had originally tried command hooks, bad idea. And this top right one, we hung them all up and the second I walked out of this room, the whole entire hook and mirror fell off and fell onto the floor. And shockingly, one, the mirror didn't break. That's the biggest shock of them all. The mirror didn't break. And then two, none of the bamboo or raffia or anything came off. Like it was all still assembled. So it was totally fine. Um, so yeah, that to me is a testament of how strong the Gorilla Glue is because nothing actually fell off. And then, uh, trying to think of what else. I think after that, it was just like finishing touches. I think if you're not gonna do a whole remodel and if you're just gonna do like a makeover, that would be 
be my suggestion is taking all those little like mundane things that you have in your space and switching them out for more permanent, more once, sorry, just have a strand here, that's bugging me. Um, once that just look nicer because it just shows that you looked at all those little details in a space that like that pulls everything together for me is looking at those little details because I feel like no matter what color palette you choose in your bathroom, if you put in the attention to those little details, it's gonna look like a professional did it. But that's basically all we did. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the final reveal videos. So I hope you like it, but yeah. So final, revi <laughs> final reveal videos in three, two, one. break down in that um, in the comments in case I didn't do it in this video very well just so if you are decorating your own space that you can kind of adjust what I did based on your budget and your style um, but yeah um, let me know in the comments below if you liked this type of video what rooms you want to see me do next or what other types of videos you want to see um, I guess if you liked this video, you can like it. And if you really like me, you can subscribe, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, I hope y'all have a great day. And yeah, I think that's all. Have a great day. Bye.